All right. So what's this first 48 about? We uh, we started. Oh, and I love it. Back, you know. Well, this you uh, uh, it's a show. Um, it's the first 48 hours in a homicide investigation. It's not not actors. They're real people, real detectives, and uh, real victims, witnesses, everything like that. So. He, they, they'll start the show out with a detective getting a call. They'll play maybe the 911 call. Oh, my God, someone's been shot. They go to the location, and you just see the carnage. But they blur out the faces of the, the dead people. But you get to see them, like, laying there with those askew shoes. Boy, when you fuck, when you, yeah, yeah I can say fuck now. I keep forgetting that, that we're sitting here. Yeah. When you fa- when you fucking drop dead like that, when you're shot, you just... You just fall down. Your bones just in go In whatever blah. kind of wacky way. And, and, and you can only think, if you didn't have so much bull- so many bullets in you, you'd go like, ow, oh, my knee really hurts being twisted like this. But they got bullets in them, so they don't care. Yeah, They're the just muscles, on the ground. I guess the muscles really do a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like Once, things you can't even imagine. Because as soon as like, there's no life in your body, then the muscles just... Uh, Ah. They turn off. They they get el- elasticy, I guess, at first, and your bones can do whatever the hell they please, and that's what happens. They just lay in there. Uh, they show that. Uh, they give a little synopsis of what happened, and then the clock starts ticking. Forty-eight, click, tick, tock, and then they have forty-eight hours to uh, get a lead. Why? To get some kind of a lead because they say that if a homicide detectives don't get some kind of a lead within forty-eight hours. That the chances of them solving the cl- uh, crime are are very small. And this is a known thing with detectives yeah. and all that. I guess people, the evidence is fresh as the first. Yeah, it's got to be fresh. Your leads have got to be close. You need to take that evidence that you get and process it into witnesses uh, and, and suspects, and you know th- that's ha- all has to happen within 48 hours, or else the case goes uh, uh, cold. Um, so they do the first 48, and uh, it, it's amazing. But one thing I did notice. I watched a marathon of this and I, I, all day yesterday. I must have watched probably close to 20 episodes. Wow. And you got to get outside and get some of this nice no, no, I summer was, air. I, I, was, I was out during the weekend. Yeah. I was out. Yeah, it was it's Sunday. Sunday, I just want to do nothing because I know, you know, we got to come in early today. Uh, so I'm watching and um, out of all the episodes I watch, and they, they offer two cases per episode. They kind of intertwine them, like they get you all dramatically hooked on one case, and then they go, and then 500 miles away in Memphis, I hate Tennessee. When they start that other like, story, oh, line. here's the and other like, story. No, but then you get but hooked on that so storyline, cool. and then you're like, ah, no, go back to the other one. Now and I'm like, in this one. Yeah. Then they go back and they're like, oh, good. Yeah. I want to see how this one finishes up. Uh, I watched so many episodes, dude. One white guy was the murderer. In 20 episodes, <laughs> it's one one white guy uh, stabbed a crack dealer uh, in the chest in an apartment complex. Every single other case was black on black crime, uh, murder, uh, with an occasional Hispanic thrown in, just for good measure. But the, the this is what I'm saying. They gotta they gotta do something. These these leaders because. The black people are killing each other. This N-word funeral, look, I'm watching CNN right now. They're having The NAACP is getting this big hoopla meeting together to bury the N-word, to have a funeral for the N-word. Meanwhile, you will watch a, a simple show like uh, First 48. This is These are police cases. They're not saying, let's get all the black cases and put it on TV. This isn't uh, the first black 48. This is, this is crime. Uh, murders that are happening, and they are all black on black crimes, just blasting each other. And uh, very interesting show to watch because uh, the trickery that works on people stuns me. These people never watched NYPD Blue. They never watched Adam Twelve Tricks are working on these people. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a great one. They had one guy. They brought him in, and he was scared. They could tell he was scared. So they took a picture of him, his mugshot, and they put it with six other pictures. And then they circled it in red ink and wrote, uh, I identify this guy as the getaway driver. That's all they did. And then they walked in and went, hey, somebody's fingering you as the getaway driver. The guy freaks out. He goes, I did not do it. Man. I did. It wasn't me. And he was freaking out. And I guess they knew it wasn't him. So he goes, well, who was it? 
He goes, oh, it was Dee Dee. Dee Dee was the driver. Dee Dee. <laughs> so they bring in Dee Dee. And Dee Dee ain't giving up nothing. And they tell him, look, your buddy, your buddy just gave you up. Your buddy uh, Mike just gave you up. And he goes, no, Mike's my boy. Mike's my boy. He ain't doing that. No way. So they bring Mike back. And they tell Mike, look, we're going to open the door. Dee Dee's in there. He goes, if you identify him and recognize him as Dee Dee, just nod your head. So they go, okay. They open the door. He, Mike looks in at Dee Dee, nods his head, and then they shut the door. Now the guy's in with Dee Dee. Go, look, he just fingered you for the whole thing. <laughs> oh, God. And meanwhile, all he was doing was saying, yeah, that's him. <laughs> right, right, right. So then the Dee Dee's in there, and he goes, he goes, all right, now let me tell you what happened. <laughs> and he just starts turning on everybody. <laughs> but it's hysterical, the tricks that work on these people. The trickery. Oh, the trickery is great. And it just works time and time again. They get each, they get one guy to turn on another guy by letting him think they know. And they'll never tell him exactly what happened. I saw some guy pull the dumbest move ever. This big, fat guy decides he's going to take his ex-girlfriend and run her over about 15 times and leave just nothing but a blob in the street. He destroyed this woman. He killed her, obviously. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone's dead. It's homicide, you know, so uh, uh, they, they all get killed in this. Uh, so she's, she's dead. He ran her over the car, backed over her about five times. So they find him. He's sitting on, on a, a porch. They walk up to him <laughs> and start asking him about... Uh, this girl. And he goes, yeah, I knew her. I knew her. And then they don't say anything. He goes, but you know, I ain't got a vehicle, so I couldn't have done nothing to nobody. And then the woman starts laughing. He goes, what do we say about a vehicle? <laughs> so the guy, oh the guy God. didn't even know she was run over, and he's like, "I ain't even got a vehicle." You just gotta keep <laughs> your mouth for that. shut. He fell for the oldest gag in the book. That's why they don't give them any information. They let them start talking and see what they know about the murder, and uh, they, it's so entertaining to watch because they're real people, and you don't realize how often you should shut your mouth and lawyer up. Because the, the cops will get pissed when any of these guys sit down and go, I want to talk to a lawyer. They'll go, you sure? You don't want to say anything. Okay, they pick up the folder, they walk out, they shut the door, and they slam the folder on their desk and go, die, you lawyered up. Like, they're all mad. Because some of these guys will just, ip, 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 ip. they talk, talk, tacking, tacking, tacking. Yap, yap, yap. Let's say hi to Mike in Chicago. <laughs> Mike, what's up? Yeah, the best part about that show is the uh, the onlookers, the crowd reaction. If you watch every single episode, there'll be a black kid on a bike in a white T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. It's no just, it's, it looks like the, the same setting. Yeah, it's 3 in the morning. Kids are out. Yeah, it's the same group of people. And no one has a name. It's always like, oh, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, Gambo. Gambo came over. Do you know Gambo's name? Nah, he's my boy. Like, how long uh, you known him? Maybe uh, since like 89. All right, what's Gambo's real name? I don't know. It's Gambo. It's like, I just, okay. I just know him as Gambo. And, and there's different. Was there someone named Cheeseburger? Uh, there was Cheesy. Cheesy? Uh, Cheesy was one of them. That's coming and, like bo crazy. and Boogie. Cheesy and Boogie. We're accused of uh, murder. How funny is that? Cheesy and Boogie, and they had to bring some guy in <laughs> to turn on Cheesy. <laughs> what, the McBurglar? <laughs> was he turning? The Grimace. Uh... <laughs> and Cheesy and Boogie, what an awful combination that is. A Cheesy Boogie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was. Uh, it, it's a great show, though, and it, it shows these um, the gallows humor of the detectives, which is kind of cool. You don't usually show that. They don't usually show that because it's deemed politically incorrect. But you know, there's just m slaughtered people laying there, and uh, they got their suit on and they're talking about, ah, why did they come out just like this on a hot day? Hey, you look like a million bucks, and they're standing like over a, a dead body, shot up body. Nice. But the kids are the things that they really get. Uh, they get sensitive about. They got to show. They're like, ah. And they do this other thing that that kind of gets to me uh, on, on some level. It doesn't matter how despicable the person that was killed is. The cops have to make it seem like it's bad that they're dead. There are some people that absolutely deserve to be dead in this show. There's uh, uh, two guys. They were uh, drug dealers. And they got ripped off. A couple of guys burst into the house, shot them dead, took their drugs. And... Um, the, the cop is like, well, now i got to go. You know, he's a father. He has four children. 
Um, now I got to go to the wife and tell him what happened. And meanwhile, he's going to like four different women to tell him that the baby daddy from four different children uh, has been killed. It's not like it, this guy's the upstanding citizen that was that was murdered. He's a drug dealer. So they do that a little too much. And when kids get killed, because there was this one, it was like two year old in a baby seat, wow. and some guy fires into the car and just kills the the kid. They and, showed dead uh, kid. Uh, no, that's one thing they won't even blurry out the face or anything. They don't show it at all. Good, good. No dead kid. But they show the tiny little body bag that they put him in. Little bitty body bag. And they show the guy's not even straining to put it in the little morgue mobile. Uh. But then the cops are all like, you know, because this guy is going to turn up because people don't uh, stand for uh, for baby killers. Cause this, And when he got back to, uh, to the station house, because the, the people around won't even talk about it. They try to, to, to talk to him. He goes, ah, no one knows nothing. But they get back to the um, station house, and the phone's ringing, just ringing. I know who it is. I know this guy. Talk to this one. You can't be seen talking to the cops. Yeah, that's what it is. You can't be seen talking to the friggin' cops, but they want you there, and they, they're they screaming. They wonder why. When they tell uh, these mothers that their uh, sons are dead, oh, it's, that scene, it's the scene from, you know, every one of those movies like... Uh, menace to society or any any of those because then for the most part they're they're not decent people they're criminals that are also being killed but the, the mothers don't want to you know it's still their baby so they just Wah! fall down and the cops are like this the part of the job i don't uh, really enjoy having to tell people this that's actually the part kenny would have volunteered for. oh yeah. of course i love to i'll, I'll go. volunteer i'll go I'll tell him. We don't know if he's dead yet. That's okay. I'll make an apology if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm willing to go back. <laughs> this show is actually a ripoff, though. It's is a concept. It? I, it's, it's so irritating. Yes. I pitched a show uh, uh, called uh, 53 and a Quarter. Mm. It's about uh, uh, the first 48 hours, but you like to sleep in. So it's a little over five hours the next <laughs> oh, day. It's a little longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's go to Alan in Edison, New Jersey. <laughs> Alan, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Al. Hey, you know, I watched the same marathon as you did, man, and uh, that one white guy you're talking about that was the drug, that killed the drug dealer, Yep. he was the only fucking guy that started bawling and crying. And oh, like, is he crying? I can't take it. I can't take it. He goes, how am I going to survive in there? <laughs> talking about prison? Because he was yeah. like some red-headed, uh, what was his crime? skinny guy. He'd stabbed this crack uh, oh, dealer. Boy. He went out to buy some crack. And it's amazing how they put this stuff together. The detectives are really amazing at, at this stuff. They found a cell phone. They get cell phone records. They find the guy, you know, is living in the same apartment complex. So they bring him down to question him. And instantly, everyone's a friggin' liar. Everyone on this show is a liar. They sit down in that interrogation room and just start lying. And then the guy's going, what are you doing? He goes, you, you think you're brought down here because we don't know anything yet? He goes, we know already. I'm waiting for you to tell me. And then the person starts going like, oh, my God, they know. They know. And they sent people out to check his apartment. So they found a knife well, why under would his you, mattress. Why would you talk even exactly. if you thought they knew? Exactly. You think you're going to get a break? You think yeah, you're going to get a break? That's what they tell you. They go, you have a choice right now. You have a choice. You can make things a lot better for yourself or you can go to jail right now. What, you tell me what you want to do. That's what they do to these guys. And a lot of them will just start talking. This one guy had a knife under his bed. They While they were interrogating him, they were searching his place. They found blood on the knife. Uh, so instantly they call the guy that's interrogating him. And he goes, look, we know. Because we know about the knife. We know where it was in your apartment. We found it. He goes, what, what are you, why are you still lying to me? And then he's like, look, I went... I went to get some crack from the guy. He started, you know, he turned on me, and it was self-defense. It was self-defense. He starts crying. <laughs> Wouldn't you clean the knife off or get rid of it? And the guy didn't have a weapon, the other guy. He still had crack clinched in his dead hand. Jeez. And uh, a huge stab wound to his chest. They said, uh, they thought he was shot at first, but they turned him over and went, wow. Wow. It's a lot of blood. Serial killer guys like John Douglas, when they go after you, it's a psychological thing. When they have a case mounting against you, like especially when you've done like a whole bunch of stuff, he said they leave, like they they bring you into a room where there's photographs of everything blown up, and they make it look like they have a mountain right. of evidence. That's and that's why you feel overwhelmed by it, and like you have to talk. Or in some you have cases, to explain it. 
And once you start explaining all that evidence on the wall or what they're saying, you're hanging yourself. Or if they have, like, if it's somebody's head that got bashed in with a rock in one case, they had the rock that was used to kill the person mm. there. Yeah. And I think they brought in a couple guys they weren't sure of, and the person that kind of fixated on the rock, they knew. Uh-huh. Because he knew that was the murder weapon. I mean, it's like the more shit you show somebody... They're, they're amazing what they can do as far as uh, uh, getting information out of people when they have this limited evidence. They use whatever evidence they can get, but it's not enough to build a case off of. But it's enough to bring a guy in and start questioning him about it and letting him just talk about it, and they wind up hanging themselves. Another good one was a, uh, some, uh, a couple of homeless guys uh, decided to beat the crap out of a homeless guy, caved his skull in to steal his scooter, his little motor scooter. And uh, they found a bloody footprint on a cardboard box and matched up the uh, pattern on the on the bottom. It's funny because they make fun of CSI. They go, uh, and, and then the CSI people are brought in, and the real CSI people brought in to take prints and everything. And uh, one of the guys going, now we just got to go to the uh, the shoe print uh, anal- or the shoe print analyzing computer. And he starts laughing. You know, it's like <laughs> we don't they have, have this. they have to, they actually go around. Into the uh, neighborhood, yeah. and we're telling homeless people, "Let me look at your shoes. Let me look at your shoes. Let me look." And they found a guy with a match. No kidding. Yeah, he goes. Now we just go to the shoe match computer, like CSI Scott. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> that is a great show, though, man. They they do intertwine between a couple. Of, I didn't watch the marathon, but I've seen the show. Uh, no, I, yeah, I'm gonna go, go home and watch it. And today. They, they they said about CSI because one guy poured bleach on a bunch of stuff, and another guy burnt a car completely to get rid of the evidence. And and the, one of the uh, detectives said, he goes. People watching that goddamn CSI show, he goes, and they know now to get rid of all these little forensic evidence pieces that are laying around hairs and little blood spots and and things like that. Now they're kind of learning, but See, they're CS- still too stupid. CSI to- is fucking it up for the, the real yeah. detectives out there. I was, I, was one, I was waiting for one of the detectives to just go, well, Frank, this is a case where she was driven mad. <laughs> You know, and put his glasses on and walk out of frame. You know, murderers are going free because of a TV show. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, and They're kind of teaching them. Well, you know, the Imus thing, you know, that that's just hurting people all over the place. Yeah. But there's actual shows that allow, you know, uh, criminals to, 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 you know, get educated and get, get away rid with of stuff. The, uh, get rid <laughs> of the evidence. But this was, I mean, I could not believe the amount of just black-on-black crime that is going on. It's just ridiculous the way they are shooting each other uh, j- to death. Yeah, Brian has something on that. Brian on Long Island, what's up? Hey, I'm all- how you doing? I hey, watched good. a uh, marathon of uh, First 48 last weekend. What a great show, man. But like yeah. I said, Anthony, it's, it's mostly black on black crime. I think I've seen maybe like one or two cases where it's a white guy, and it, it's a lifestyle for these guys. You know, the, the black yep. guys. They, they get pulled down into the stage house. They just saw one. The, the suspect's names were Mookie and Knockout. And uh, <laughs> Knockout was right now Mookie. And Mookie, and, and the, the, the cops knew what he had done. They, they had him fingered already. And he was like, well, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is, that's, you know, that's, that's life. You know, uh, I'm just going to leave it up to God's hand. You know, they, they, yeah. they live this lifestyle like it's such a great thing to, to kind of boost their street credit, I guess, you know? Hey, wait, was, Mo- was, Knockout, a, was mm. Knockout a pretty girl? <laughs> no, Knockout wasn't a pretty girl. <laughs> knockout and Mookie. They all have nicknames. It's hysterical. They all got nicknames. You know, I used to see this uh, all the time. I used to be a cop in Brooklyn. So, you know, I, seeing these guys, it's the same thing. They just they keep living in the street, even young kids. Going from the age of 10 years old and up, it, it's just a, a glorified lifestyle for them. They have no respect. It really for them. is. They have no respect for each other. To shoot and you talk to the kids. families... They talk to the families of some of these people, and it's nothing but, um, you know, he was into drugs for a while, but he really is, was trying to get his life together now. It's like, well, you know, he's found amongst uh, a bunch of drugs and bullet casings uh, dead on the ground. I don't think he was doing such a good job of maybe cleaning his uh, life up. The the family, you know, and albeit they're, uh, they're a little sad, but a bit delusional. Yeah, let's say hi to Richie in Rhode Island. Richie. Hey, I was watching that, too. Did you see the one with the guy? They brought him in for questioning. They let him sit there for a minute, and uh, he starts praying and then throwing up in a cup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> guy, like, crosses himself. He's praying to God, and then he's like, bleh, bleh. He starts throwing up in a cup. That's in front of him. He just couldn't take it. Yeah, and they were like, all right, a little bit of pressure on this guy. <laughs> the cops know, too. They walk in, and they know, and they just look him in the eye and go, you're lying. 
Because you're you're lying to me. Because what am I stupid? And they just they just know. That's awesome. I can't wait to see the show. Uh, Frank in Brooklyn, what's up? Yo, it's Fred Opie. What's up, man? Oh, um, hey, Fred. Hey, Ed. That one yeah. where the uh, 61-year-old black guy gunned down the two guys in the pickup truck. In the pickup, he yeah. went into his house and pulled out that arsenal. The first thing <laughs> I thought of was what would happen if they emptied your house. They, they <laughs> it was like... Had 40 shotguns? <laughs> they had about 30 uh, shotguns in the trunk, and then they pulled out like an AR and an AK and... Yeah, this guy. Uh, yeah, he was he was a bad dude. And that's sixty one years old. I mean, yeah, the, the he was no kid, no, no kidding. That's what they're looking up to. Huh. All right, thank you, uh, Fred. All right, yeah. All right, let's go to Allen in Massachusetts. Allen. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, hey man. This, man. Only, this only show that I uh, DVR is this show in South Park. So uh, this is a great show on TV, though. But I want to talk about the burn victims. Uh, the only way they could identify him is by the the five gold teeth. That's a uh, that's yeah. original there. You know, yeah, they they burnt so, some car so badly with a body in it that they're looking in and they're looking for a while and then someone goes, "Is is that a bra strap?" And it's like, "Oh man, we might have a woman here." Couldn't even tell. Just burnt to a crisp. Why not just feel around in it? That's how I usually tell. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> if it feels like like two burnt ice cream cones, you'll know you have a gal. Oh, God. It looks like somebody burned a hot pocket. Yep, that's a woman. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so it's on A and E. It's called First Forty Eight. Yeah, yeah. I guess the new episodes are starting up. Um, so, what is this? Thursday, uh, the second season. Uh, I'm not even sure. These were from 2006. Yeah. Uh, they got to do follow-ups because at the end, it's like uh, he's awaiting trial for murder one. He's And then they go, he is assumed innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, they have to it's say like, that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, don't, I wasn't looking at him thinking he was uh, guilty. All right, this is a little strange. we got Orlando calling from Miami. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey. What's up, Orlando? And what's what's hey, funny about that, that show, man, is that my wife and I bet to see uh, what town never gets it done. And I hate to say it, man, but Miami sucks ass, man. All you see them is they're having Cuban coffee. They're supposed to be uh, checking out some guy, and all of a sudden they show them in the corner of the street they're having some cafe con leche or coladita. And my wife and I are like, oh, well, yeah, of course, like, oh, it was Miami. Yeah. Oh, that is know, funny. 48, 48 days, they might get it done then. 48 days, call it. You know, the guy's right, because sometimes 48 hours ticks away, and they go, you know, we didn't get him. We yeah, don't have exactly. a suspect. We don't have leads. We don't have nothing. Uh, and, yeah, Miami j does seem to be that uh, really? <laughs> that city. Remember we used to play uh, Guess the Color? Yeah. Can you do that with this game? No. It's the all... Show, I mean? You know why? See, Guess the Color, when Cops was huge and everybody was watching Cops, Aunt and I, back in the day, we would sit around and... Uh, the call would come in, and we would guess if it was a white crime or a black crime. Yeah. We were right probably 90% of the time. Because it's a lot a lot of shootings going on, a lot of shootings. It's a lot of that spur of the moment, um, crime of passion shootings that go on, uh, drug-related. So uh, a majority of these people that they're, they're pulling in uh, are black guys, a lot of young black men that are being uh, pulled in on this show. I'm wait. I'm just waiting for someone to say, you know, a read a review about it that says it's, you know, sensationalizing it and it's a racist show or something like that. But I haven't seen that yet. Nah, that'll happen. It's uh, it's and, and you know, the de a lot of the detectives are black, and uh, you know, I'm sure they don't like seeing it. You know, they're just shaking their heads all the time, just going, "Geez, what a waste." But a lot of these guys, it's amazing. Been on the job homicide like 20 years. Do you imagine just 20 years of marching around dead bodies, just butchered bodies and stuff, kids? All yeah, right, then you just, you know, go home to your wife and kids. <laughs> I figure after five. You think five is the Five's point where the you just doesn't even matter? It's, it's like, like ah. you might as well be painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or something. It doesn't matter. You're just another day at work. All right. So it's first 48. It's on A&E. Yeah, it's check great it out. show, man. It yeah. was, I haven't seen it in a while, but it really is a fun show yeah, to watch. And definitely. I got to check it out. Because the evidence is so fresh. Yeah, like yeah. Like Quincy got stuff, it was always bad. <laughs> right. It was always, it was always bad. What? Sam would always have like some bad. Uh, oh. Oh. This Could, is is that? It is. Of course, it is. He yeah. left a footprint, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Wait, I want to close my eyes. Remember that? To really appreciate okay. Okay. Uh, Jimmy's impression. Right. Go, Jimmy. Autopsy. Sam, there's a load on my feet, and I think it's yours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't do impressions. And then Alan Alder runs in, and his arm goes out. He goes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> yeah, the, the beginning of Quincy. You hear that little, when it's all yeah, sexy yeah. like? They would show uh, Quincy looking over a body every few like seconds of this uh, intro to the show. And he's like running his finger over the side or an arm. And then when this part comes up, he's doing that. And then they pan back and he's on his boat and it's a woman. And she gets up and like oh, hugs yeah, him. Man. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> she's dead. He, dra- he dragged her onto the boat from the morgue. He fucks her corpse in Sammy shrimp fried rice. And they 69. <laughs> Sam, I told you, don't come in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Sam. Uh, Sam's a cunt. <laughs> His foil. <laughs> That's great. Uh, All right, Quincy. Yeah. Why don't we take a break and continue?